Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Since the beginning of the year, I've been focusing my attention on this companion series, which is Les Filles Marie, um, which to my existing series that I began a couple of years ago, Les Filles du Roi. Les Filles du Marie are the marriageable girls, and that's who we're going to be ex examining today, another episode of Les Filles à Marie. Now, before we begin, let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. Super easy to do. Helps me out so much. The next couple of ways are ways to help the channel itself grow. We have Coffee, which is a one-time donation. Um, that you, it's an external platform. I've provided the links for you. Patreon, which is a monthly subscription. And then we have the Super Thanks that YouTube has permitted me to do as soon as I reached um, over a thousand subscribers. I think I'm over 1250 right now in terms of subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who have joined me on this journey. So let's get started and find out all about our Fia Marie of this episode. I've often said that the Fia du Roi, the king's daughters, were the founding mothers. Well, the Fia Marie are the founding grandmothers. They came before. And you can see by the years indicated 1634 to 1662. This is 28 years. Now, 268, 260 girls in 28 years is not going to build a country. And that is why Les Filles du Roi came into existence and was a government program. Les Filles Marie came individually or in small groups. It was not funded by the by the government. It was truly funded um, by individual churches or patrons, that sort of thing. Um, and they took their chances. They didn't get a, you know, a big fancy dowry or any kind of thing like that. There was no king's gift, um, you know, upon marriage. They simply came usually out of economic necessity, but certainly there was a tremendous amount of bravery involved in that decision. So today's episode is Elizabeth Camus, and she is a viewer request. I do not have her in my, um, you know, files, and I was delighted to explore Elizabeth and her story. So let's get started. So Elizabeth was born in 1645 in Paris, France, in the parish of saint sauveur Her parents were Pierre Camus and Jeanne Charles. Um, the church that she was born no longer exists, but could date its existence back to uh, 1216. It was rebuilt in the 16th century and demolished in 1787 with the hope of rebuilding it, but a little thing like the French Revolution interfered in this plan. L'Église saint sauveur was found on the corner of saint sauveur and the Saint-Denis. There exists a plaque, which is um, up there right next to the map, um, commemorating this historic church, and this is an illustration of it as well on the bottom left. Um, let's talk a little bit about the location where she was born in Paris. It's no, known as the second, the deuxième arrondissement, and remember, Paris is laid out in circles. It's also known as La Bourse. Um, this arrondissement is located on the right bank of the River Seine, and it's one that's focused on business activities right now. There are several banking headquarters, as well as the former Paris Bourse, the Stock Exchange, the Paris Opera, the Santé District, which is the textile district. Um, and actually, just as a trivial note, uh, it is home uh, to Grand Rex, the largest movie theater in Paris. When I get to Paris, I've got to see this. Remember how I said that some of the um, Fia Marie were recruited by and came with a group? This is one of them. Uh, they, she came on Le Saint-André. She uh, came at the behest of Jean Mans, uh, who is a tremendous, tremendous force in um, you know, in the fall of 1658. Jean Mans and Marguerite Bourgeois were we've talked about endlessly uh, as being the founder of uh, the Congregation Notre Dame. Um, they left for France to raise financing and get new recruits from Montreal. Uh, because remember, Montreal was not thriving at that time. Um, and um, the Associates of Montreal, uh, which was the company, founded, uh, provided funds to contract a few soldiers and brides-to-be for some of the settlers. And um, they recruited three nurse nuns for her hospital and a few brides-to-be. And so this is um, 
you know, some of the people that would have come. That statue is the statue in Montreal of Jeanne Nance and how she um, founded the hospital and was truly a guardian angel for so many people. And this is the ship that she would have. So think about that. Think about the fact that Elizabeth was in such amazing company of these strong, strong women. So the groom that she would select, his name was Louis Gertet de Le Sabotier. He was born in 1625 in Demoray. We do not know his parents. And right now there are about 1,500 people. Uh, it is no longer known as Demoray. It is Moraine sur Sarthe Demoray. So that's part of, uh, you know, the challenge of trying to research these places now. It's found in the Pays de la Loire region, in Maine and Loire département, in the Église Saint-Martin, where he would have been baptized, was built in the 11th century. Now, Le Grand Recru of 1653. This is Louis and his journey to New France and to Montreal. Le Grand Recru was when Chomedy uh, and um, somebody went to France and recruited Marguerite Bourgeois to help him find, to fund and start um, a church uh, for Montreal, which she did, and uh, became an educator and all of that. And so there was about 100 uh, recruits because at that time, Montreal was not going to thrive. So they went and got some pioneer stock and Louis was among them. So, um, and on that plaque that you see, I've circled Louis Gilt. And he is uh, among the, I mean, you can't get more uh, more of a pioneer than, than that. And I find it so interesting that they both came at the, Marguerite Bourgeois kind of connects the dots of this couple in a way I have not seen before. So I think that's really fascinating. So on October 26, 1659, Elizabeth married Louis. Now, Elizabeth was 15 years of age at the time, he was 20 years older than her, 35. So this is part of, it was very common. This is traditional, um, but 15 is a very young age. So um, let's see what happens. So let's talk a little bit about Montreal. The wonderful city that would become Montreal started off as Ville-Marie by the founder, Paul de Chaumetri, Sœur de Maisonneuve, and was essentially a missionary center. And it was founded in May of 1642. The colony would not thrive, and it was on the verge of extinction when Chamonix decided to return to France, hence the Grand Recruit that we just spoke about. Um, and Marguerite Bourgeois would found the Notre Dame Congregation. Um, the colonists would find, um, by 1663, they would um, create their own militia so that they could protect themselves. It was a dangerous place. Montreal was not, you know, this amazing place that we know today. It was kind of not a laughing stock, but you know, Quebec City and Three Rivers had it all over them. So it was not the the be all and end all. So they had to fight really hard because no one could understand how an island could um, people would live on an island and and have anything and the currents and all of that. So they kind of laughed it off. Ultimately, that island would prove to be the salvation. Now, we want to see, have a look at the 1666 census, which I have listed there, and it has um, we and Elizabeth. Notice how all of a sudden they're 10 years apart. And maybe that's true. Maybe I have wrong information, but in any event. And then we have their first daughter, Elizabeth, five years of age, and Marie, four, and Catherine, two. Now, in the 1667 census, we have him, 35, and we have her, Isabel. Remember that Elizabeth is often called Isabel uh, as well. And now they're 13 years apart, a little bit better. Marie Elizabeth is six years old. Marie is um, now five. Catherine is three. And they've added a new Marie. They have four beasts and 14 alpha avala, so a lot of land uh, inside of Montreal. So that's about 12 acres of land. They would go on to have 11 children together. Let's have a look. Marie Elizabeth would marry Eustache Prévost and have six children, five of whom would make it. She would also have a natural child with Jacques Hubert named Nicolas. No further information. If you have any connection, please let me know. Marie would marry Pierre Andegrave and have 12 children, six of whom would make it. Catherine would marry 
Michelle Kelly, no, and have three children, two of whom would make it. Catherine would then marry Denis Villeneuve and have 11 children, five of whom would make it. Marie would marry Jean Sauvieux and have two children, neither of which made it. She then married Pierre Guerrault and had four children, three of whom would make it. Louis would marry Madeleine Chiquan and have 11 children, 11 of whom, all of whom made it. Madeleine's mother was Madeleine Chrétien, who we profiled in episode 172. Madeleine would marry Georges Deport and have two children, both of whom would make it. She then married René Beau and had eight children, all of whom made it. René's mother was Etienne Loret, who we featured in episode 92. Pierre would marry Marianne Giard and have nine children, eight of whom would make it. Marianne's mother was who we featured in episode 92. Eustache, all we know is that he passed away at 23. We have Angelique, who would pass away at the age of seven. Françoise would marry Charles Vigée and have eight children, all of whom would make it. Charles's mother was Fédua Marguerite Moitié, who we featured in episode 67. Paul would marry Marie-Madeleine Plouffe and have six children, all of whom would make it. Marie-Madeleine's mother was Marie-Madeleine Gilbert, who we have not yet featured. Can't wait to do that one. Tragically, as I was researching this um, this episode, I had no idea, right? I did not know. She died at 35 years of age. Just heartbreaking. July 20th, 1680 is when she would pass away. And this is, and she was buried at Notre Dame. Um, just stunning. Um, and she died in hospital. So one would have to believe that she had been sick. So um, just a heartbreaking situation. So Louis would try to carry on alone. This is even more heartbreaking. The 1681 census, we have Louis, who's 50 years old. He has his children, Catherine, Louis, Madeleine, Pierre, Eustache, Algenie, Françoise, Paul. He has one gun, three goats, and 30 arpans à la, so about 25 acres of land. So for all his you know, success, he was left with all these children. And then he would pass away himself by 1687, leaving the minor children, um, you know, having to have, a, a, a custo you know, a custody or guardianship appointed for them and their and their property. So this was just a really, I don't think I've seen this kind of an ending in all the stories that I've told. So the, the descendants of this couple have to be strong in order to continue that lineage uh, and survive. And so they did. Um, just amazing, amazing, you know, to have survived. The line having survived, despite the fact that the lady died at 35, he died seven years later, leaving all these children um, orphans. And he was buried at Buenotraum, which I assume is because he was probably living with one of his older um, children at the time. So let's talk a little bit about the resources that you need to use. I've got all the addresses there in the notes, but I'd like to spotlight Wikitree this time. Wikitree is an amazing collaborative effort. I'm on it. I use it. Um, and obviously, I work on uh, different projects as well um, and, you know, different trees that I'm working on personally. I'm trying to get involved uh, with the Fille du Roi project there. They've done some incredible work. So, uh, and the Fia Marie as well. So just have a look at um, this. You will be amazed. Now, remember, this is, they are trying to build one giant tree so that what they're doing is you can't just put information. You've got to source it, source it, which I love. So it's a very, very good resource for all of us looking for our roots. So this amazing couple who basically, their lives were cut short. Um, we're truly a remarkable um, couple to be able to um, really build the life, be part of that huge uh, crew, and and they were just this amazing couple that were recruited not only by the Carrera crew as Louis was, but also by um, by the by the 1659 recruitment from Marguerite and, and Jeanne Mels. So both of them came to Montreal and were truly the pioneers in this uh, place. Now, 
I've saved the best for last. Do you want to know how many descendants of this couple that um, were here for such a short time? As of 1729, they had 356 descendants. Just amazing. Um, I said that right, 356 descendants. So um, for all the shortness of their lives, they left us with such a long, long uh, lineage. So we thank, um, we thank Elizabeth for having braved um, the, the, you know, the Atlantic and having come across and really making certain that Montreal would thrive. And we want to make sure to honor her and thank her for her contribution and bless her memory. And I also want to uh, have a shout out to all my patients and supporters. I couldn't do what I do without you and your support it means so much. So thank you again. And until I see you on episode number 27, au revoir.